uh, had just delivered my my first child. Okay. So I had to get into the uh, service, and you know this uh, fire service had got like you know very uh, strenuous uh, training, you know the physical uh, training. So and my daughter was just uh, two uh, months old. So without my family support, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have even joined the service or even passed out uh, from my training. And women, I feel, uh, are now moving towards this domain of financial empowerment. And that is very crucial in them becoming decision makers for their own lives. Right. So which is why I feel that identity is what matters most to every woman. Which show that divorce rate in India, ma'am, is uh, somewhere increasing. And some people say it is because of women empowerment, ma'am. So what do you think about it? I was a research supervisor. I had traveled to nearly 10 countries. I'm a well-published author in my field also, well-respected abroad also. In spite of all that, uh, one of my bosses, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not able to take any names right now, but it's a very funny incident. Sure. Now I'm, I'm able to, the gift of hindsight, I'm able to think about it and laugh, but that day I really, really cried a lot. Anbu Madam, uh, you've been a professor in government uh, college in public administration for so many years. So, uh, from that routine, uh, is there any cool side of you, ma'am? <laughs> that comes first. The job comes later. Oh, so, okay. I'm a professional drummer. Vanna, ma'am, you said you sing and you, uh, you've you been trained in Carnatic singing. Um, can you please sing uh, some lines for all of us here? Sure. Good morning, wishing you all a very happy Women's Day. Today on this special occasion, it is such a pleasure to have with us three successful women from different walks of life who are contributing to the society in a way we can never imagine. So it's a great pleasure to have you all here at Officers IS Academy. We have with us uh, Priya Ravichandran ma'am, IS officer. She's the first woman in the fire and rescue department of government of Tamil Nadu. And in December 2023, she has been inducted into IS. Such a pleasure to have you ma'am. Thank you. We also have with us Vandra Rajivadam, who's an IRS officer, customs and indirect taxes. She is the stu uh, passed out from 2016 batch, clearing the UPSC civil service exam. It's a great pleasure to have you ma'am. Thank you. And we also have Dr. Anbu Mugam, who is a professor in public administration and she's a UPSC mentor for both prelims, mains and the interview level with the government of Tamil Nadu. Such a pleasure to have all of you with us, ma'am. Priya, ma'am, uh, you wrote your UPSC as well as the Tamil Nadu state uh, exams in 2003. So, ma'am, what was the aspiration to get, write some government exam, get into a service which was otherwise assumed to be a man's domain, ma'am? Uh, I think it, hope it's not a cliche answer. Uh, but then, yes, uh, since I was young, I don't know, I was just carried away with, um, you know, officers into the public service and I wanted to get to the public service because I've seen two uh, women officers as a child okay. um, and um, their contribution to uh, the public life has been like excellent and I've heard stories about them, they're brave stories, in fact. Uh, how they had uh, actually uh, faced a mob and how actually as a lady of they were able to control um, a caste, a communal uh, riot uh, in a place. So um, as a child, when you get to know stories about these women, you actually get carried away and you feel like, okay, she's one heroine whom you see right in front of your eyes. So... I had developed uh, that kind of liking first towards that particular officer, the woman officer. And then, you know, um, I got motivated by my uh, father, um, especially who say who kind of like, you know, uh, introduced me to this world of like, you know, public service and especially in particular the uh, IAS. So that's how I, it got imbibed in me. And uh, I said, OK, let me prepare for it. And I had prepared and um, got to it. And getting into fire service was a different story. OK, so we come to that story also, ma'am. Uh, Vandana, ma'am, all of us have such dreams. Many of us have, in fact. But, you know, from having a dream to getting into civil service, that struggle. Can you just elaborate, ma'am? Because I'm sure you would have you would have pursued, you would have worked against a lot of odds, and then getting here. How was that journey, ma'am? 
to sum up in just one word it was a journey of perseverance okay and uh, it took a lot of tenacity and courage to keep going through that struggle year after year after again because we've seen this 12th fail movie recently yes, you know yes. this world restart yes, yes. <laughs> that's exactly the story of every civil service aspirant hmm. uh, who gives multiple attempts to better one's rank okay so i've gone through that struggle through a uh, two multiple times wherein every point when you want to give up you still have that little voice that keeps telling you that yeah. you know you should go for it once again um, and uh, your uh, restart attitude or perseverance i think all of you is not going to end there because today a lot of women who are watching all of you will also have that attitude to keep persevering and restart anbu madam you have uh, you work uh, in a government college she teaches uh, public administration in a government arts college for men you have authored books you have also done a lot of research you are also on the social media mentoring a lot of students and the young generation to take up government exams opening up career opportunities for you so ma'am what do you think as a woman uh, are the challenges that you faced in setting up your passion or your career ma'am yeah uh, first thing i'm an accidental teacher okay. though from my maternal side i'm a third generation teacher both my mother's uh, grand uh, parents were uh, government school teachers my mom herself was a government school teacher okay. but i ideally should have been a drummer or a cricketer but i ended up as an accidental teacher because of my civil service aspiration which steered okay. me into this line okay. so if you want to start setting up your career we use the word being invested so you will have to have that focus and passion in order to align your goals and to create an identity for yourself this holds good for any uh, realm of career or any realm of space then you start working at it you know endurance like uh, vandana ma'am said perseverance is one thing enduring is the other spectrum so if you keep going at it i believe in ms dhoni's philosophy you know the process eventually it reaps dividends it creates your identity all right so it's it's so nice i think to understand that if we focus if we per, uh, on the process then eventually light is due to come to you at the end of the day right ma'am uh, we are talking on women's day so uh, priya ma'am you tell me um, if uh, let's let's say what happens in a marriage ma'am if as a woman you are very very successful and uh, do you think ma'am does it lead to any kind of constraint in the married life or how does it go ma'am because there are so many stories so many assumptions in the society that an educated girl can probably not become a good wife ma'am or a good mother uh, um actually like um, yes uh, see we mine was also a field oriented uh, job yeah. earlier and um, it's 24 by 7 and um even now what i got into an i is again it's going to be a 24 by 7 uh, yeah. and initial years it's going to be a field uh, a work um i always uh, feel that um, uh, there could there, there is de- definitely as a woman we have to balance both the family and the career for me it was um, um a, my parents my, my family as such uh, was a great support so without their support definitely i wouldn't have been uh, here so every um every stage of my life yes i had their supports because i joined service when i when i uh, had just delivered my my first child Okay. so i had to get into the uh, service and you know this uh, fire service had got like you know very uh, strenuous uh, training you know the physical uh, training so and my daughter was just 2 uh, uh, months old so without my family support i wouldn't have done it i wouldn't have even joined the service or even passed out uh, from my training and then again i had uh, gone through uh, various issues like you know again the second child then i w- i had uh, uh my uh, accident you know i had um, uh, survived at 45% of uh, b- ac- in burn injuries mm. so even then i had my um, entire family as a support system and um, there it, there was no question of like you know usually like you know i have almost been on the deathbed and you know came back and survived so i was like you know 3 months in icu i had um, my daughters were just 5 years and 3 years old so um, there could be an apprehension in the family saying like you know why again you want to get back into the service but there was no questions as such they said they in fact they said like you know you've gone through so much you you attained so much and why why you even think about like you know stopping or you know uh, breaking your career so i that's how i moved again into the service and again i got conferred into ias and because 
I I always feel like you know without the family support uh, a woman cannot balance and you know we always think about like you know men yeah they are uh, you know the breadwinners of the family they hardly step in or like you know given an opportunity or when the uh, or division of labor uh, or uh, you know the the love and the respect for each other you know it's when it becomes very mutual and when there is a given given take in every aspect of life yes they also step in and they really uh, help you Mom, uh, your answer is so motivating i think uh, we've generally heard if a woman is successful she cannot have it all but from what she is telling she she has children she has family and everybody is supporting each other i think uh, it is such an inspiration i think to all girls to all fam- family members to let their daughters daughter in laws pursue what they want to ma'am uh, vandana ma'am uh, Mom, uh, generally we see in a society there is there are many families in which there is no economic necessity for the women to work in some there is in some there is not uh but why do you think is it important for a woman to have a career of her own i think today uh, every woman or every person for that matter seeks an identity for themselves right there is a certain purpose to why uh, they're living there's a certain purpose to why they want to uh, exist to do something even if there is no economic necessity still women want an identity if you do ask them they will tell you that i need to be known for this and that brings the seed to build something to develop something so it's not a question of money it's not a question of uh, uh, even facing your daily uh, bread and but- even winning your daily bread and butter but it's more a question of your soul searching it's more a question of your purpose that you want to have and women i feel uh, are now moving towards this domain of financial empowerment and that is very crucial in them becoming decision makers for their own lives right so which is why i feel that identity is what matters most to every woman mom this is very true i think uh... let's we could even generalize identity is very important to any individual everybody wants to make his mark and uh, we've seen in the past because of social factors a woman has been uh, robbed of that opportunity to make an identity so to today with the changing uh, scenario with education we we at least have that opportunity to make an identity ma'am it's like self worth the self worth yes. exactly i mean it's it's more for your own self yes. rather than showing anything to the society yes. Anbu ma'am um you've recently authored a book on gender equality and representation of women in parliament so for all of your information it's there on amazon and she has been championing the cause of women empowerment for so many years and she's been uh, also like she said an accidental teacher but i think uh, she's very passionate about what she's doing so ma'am uh, um you would see that there are studies which show that diverse rate in india ma'am is uh, is somewhere increasing and some people say it is because of women empowerment ma'am so what do you think about it now i think uh, mar- when it comes to marriage there are a lot of dimensions so it's about two individuals choosing their time together so education cannot be a singular factor when it comes to you know division so there could be a lot of other factors internal factors external factors but i would generally not at all categorize education into it education leads to enlightenment it kind of opens up your learning avenues it kind of you know it's like a growth spurt education is a part of your you know milestone in your evolutionary cycle so that is the only way you can you know uh, classify education so for me that's where i put education it's a part of your life that you'll have to go through and learning can never stop only the learner can stop that's my philosophy so in your life how you apply you know the space that you went to could be an undergraduate could be a school could be a masters you could have studied abroad you could have studied in a local school all that is fine how do you apply whatever you learned whatever you were exposed to your experiences your lived in experience you know we call it that that application could vary by individuals individuals but that cannot be the reason for a you know split or a division mm-hmm. in a you know all in your life mom in fact what you're telling reminds me today we know a lot of women who are supporting their husbands in managing their business in managing their careers there are times you know there is this famous story of uh, narayan murthy and sudha murthy when narayan murthy actually wanted to set up something of his own 
he told his wife you will have to manage everything else and leave me so uh, so uh, we see that in a lot of spaces an empowered women is shouldering more responsibilities and also you know equally uh, walking with a man so that's true ma'am even to shweta even you are doing very good <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you ma'am but uh, maybe i think just to add to that yes. i think these days we should be viewing marriage as a union of two people who are coming together as friends correct right there's an underlying friendship and companionship that goes in today's marriages marriage. when compared to us 12 marriages so it's more mutual understanding mutual trust wherein each other feel as partners in growth equal partners in growth so there is no like uh, division of responsibilities like you take uh, ca- take care of the caregiving part while i'll take care of the bread earn- bread earning part it's more equal now the sharing of responsibilities the shared parenting uh, which i'm sure uh, priya yeah, would tell sure, yeah. yeah the sharing of responsibilities uh-huh. that i think we cannot pinpoint educated or an empowered woman as the reason for divorces so so true so she is basically telling let's look as work as work rather than a mother's work or father's work and no matter who takes it it is up to the couple mm-hmm. It's up we to the couple. We complement each other. We just count up. When we, when I spoke about division of labor, it's like not like you know the uh, kitchen or the cook is the domain of uh, a woman, and um, it's like you know sometimes even you 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 get the help of husbands when you're sick. Safe. They do oh, get yes. into the kitchen. They do give you. <laughs> I think COVID <laughs> saw. Also, <laughs> I think COVID saw a lot of men taking care of a uh, lot of household responsibilities <laughs> because it was just the two of us. is just two people in the home and you have to manage everything yeah so covid really taught us a lot of lessons at home <laughs> true mom uh, from what i'm hearing from all of you i think we can just conclude that uh the if divorce rate is increasing in the society i think it's because of lack of tolerance we see as individuals whether it's boys girls tolerance level is falling in the society and that's why for trivial issues you know people are ending up in divorce and maybe some people just blame it on women empowerment <laughs> yeah all right ma'am uh anbu ma'am uh ma'am the work environment from your times uh like earlier times 10 10 20 years back to now has changed a lot ma'am which we see is very very welcoming for uh, the young girls of today so how do you see that ma'am and what do you think are the changes that have come in place that can motivate the young generation girls to also take up careers you know before i even answer that question i'm going to claim i'm still young <laughs> you know <laughs> you make me sound like one you know going to retire character you know who's going to answer about 40 years back in her career but absolutely i really love that question sneha why because i started out my career in around 2006 uh, hmm. when i started with anamla university hmm. almost two decades now into my service but 2006 you know was a place you know where question aptly fits it was not a great space to be you know when you're a woman when you're smart when you're young when you're raring to go with all the qualifications that your job requires and you know you want to be a go getter you want to be a hustler i think now is the time to be you know if you're here and now now you know it's really good you know these are the attributes that you know the corporate world wants the public space wants you know public service wants out of any person in the service but way back it was tough you know for me the two words bias and prejudice stand out so how do you come out of these identical norms uh, you know how you come out of these identity norms that are required certain attributes that you are required and then again be a go getter that is very very tough so how do you persevere and how do you endure all these challenges in your everyday life in your personal life social life and in your environment and to create a space for yourself in the workplace that's really tough not to crack so uh-huh. you are an inspiration ma'am so to even imagine uh, the way you've come and in fact uh, all the members here are actually in domains which are otherwise considered to be a man's place so priya ma'am was a fire and rescue officer before she got inducted into is so we generally thought field work was for a man and uh, vandana raj ma'am is in a service which is irs customs and indirect tax which is a uniform service many of them would not be knowing vandana ma'am you tell me how do you feel ma'am to i mean i'm sure in your family you know there would be a lot of things when they see you in uniform generally they wouldn't have perceived it in that way 
so you know generally the perception of a woman and then they see you suddenly in a uniform service you commanding control so and also you were into a field where most of the men are involved a field of indirect taxation uh, and she's actually working with the gst department so how how is the feeling ma'am what are the challenges that you face I think every day uh, I'm grateful that I am in the service of IRS Customs and Indirect Taxes, which is a uniform service, and uh, the uniform uh, brings a lot of pride and respect to the job we do, and uh, it it gives immense satisfaction just by uh, just by wearing it. You feel that you've given you've been given a huge responsibility, and uh, as a woman, I feel really. Uh, truly empowered to uh, lead a pack of people towards uh, various operations like be it in customs when i worked at the airport uh, when it was gold smuggling issues or when it was narcotic smuggling issues and right now in uh, gst when we do deal with uh, searches of tax evasion uh, in other uh, economic offenses related matters so i feel these are fields where uh you generally uh, do not see a lot of women precisely because you do not feel that you would be able to do it right the exposure or the initial inkling of fear that you have that will i be able to do it will i be able to uh, man a uniform and command a group of uh, officers who would mostly be men men right so that brings you a lot of insecurities uh, uh, brings you a lot of fears but i would say that uh, it's all in the mindset right uh, as a woman i feel if i have that uh, uh, courage and conviction of what i know of my knowledge of my skill sets then i should be raring to go yes. i only uh, rem- remember bharathiyar's words when okay. when it comes to this like nimirna nannadayum neerkonda paarvayum nilathil yaarkum anja neriyum timirnda nyana cherukum udayaval pudumai pen so just to translate it says nimirna nannadayum like you walk with your head held high nerkonda paarvayum eyes talking straight to the eyes of the other person nilathil yaarku manja neriyum you have values and morals by which you're not scared of anyone and timirnda nyana cherukum you are already filled with enough knowledge and resources that gives you the courage and conviction to do what you do and you are inferior to none so if every woman feels and thinks this way i think uh, more and more women are going to get into field jobs like just all of us 100%. here are okay so we understand we really don't have to wait for any change to come from outside the change starts within we need values we need knowledge we need ethics and then i think we can just be fearless and all this change has to start from the individual um priya ma'am um i'm during your uh, you've been on the field rescuing a lot of people and in fact during one such incident you also had a major accident mam any time in your career did you have to make a choice between work and family mam um i've never thought about making a choice because as, as i already told you like yes my uh, the support from my family was tremendous was very uh, immense so this one uh, place where like um i really thought like you know should i even continue was like you know when i had this accident hmm. and i was in the icu and it was uh, um a uh, it was it turned out to be a total disastrous uh, uh, to me you know to yes, to be uh, to accept myself you know with all those wounds and injuries i think the worst thing one um, can happen to one is like you know the burn injuries that for my for me it was 45% okay and you know uh, so there there was lots of um, issues also going um, you know in the department to like you know about a uh, woman getting into uh, a fire uh, and rescue fire and rescue and you know but the government has been great support the government is very great mm. uh, um, in lending their support you know the moral and the uh, financial aspect so just that time where i thought like you know is it really worth worth 
a being in a service you know you 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 don't uh, it, it, that that uh, you know that is, that is not in your hands like you know it comes as a human being and as a woman it didn't it it comes naturally to you when you know lying in an icu with so many uh, uh, uh you know all these bandages and you know the uh, multiple uh, surgeries and then how did you make a choice how with what yes. conviction did you come back so it was again that you know um Oh, I being the first woman in the fire department, and you know, and me leaving the service would not bring, uh, you know, what kind of you know role model would I be? What kind of example I would set? You know, mm. so I it was that point again. I thought, no, you you you've shown your that's that's been an act of bravery, and the government has recognized your act of bra bravery. They've given you the president medal for gallantry yes, and yes. bravery Brilliant. medal, and me, you know, just ceasing from my work, you know, abruptly will definitely not give a good. a uh, sign to other women to come and you know i have the support i had the support of the government i had the support of the family so when i had so many opportunities then uh, it's like you know everyone is recognized your effort you recognized your work so uh, it was just that, that little moment you know at your at your lowest moment when the that kind of thought came to me but then again with all the support then i bounced back and here i'm standing See, like you uh, know where even i wouldn't even thought of like you know coming back alive yeah ma'am but you've given a very important point ma'am uh, as we rise up in the ladder of uh, in our ladder of success we have to become more responsible so this is not just for women for anybody because you now become an example for many so this is out to i think all women who are chasing a career trying to be successful and i think these three are like the best examples for today that uh, they've held up their positions and they are also inspiring a lot of people so when we look at you we know we will not lose there is still a long way to go to ma'am uh, anbu ma'am uh, in your career have you seen any uh, you know is there any incident where you felt because you were a woman you were at a certain disadvantage absolutely every single day earlier right. on right earlier but now i think uh, you reach a position where you actually command respect for the work that you put in and the professional ethics that you carry and the identity that you've built up so okay. but any particular incident uh, i think i cannot mention take a name of the institution yes, but there was one particular incident which i can actually say yes, so uh, i was working in one of the institutions after my deputation and uh, i was one of the assistant professors by then i had at least 12 to 13 years of service i was a research supervisor i had traveled to nearly 10 countries i'm a well published author in my field also well respected abroad also in spite of all that uh, one of my bosses I'm not, I'm not able to take any names right now, but it's a very funny incident. Sure. Now I'm, I'm able to, the gift of hindsight, I'm able to think about it and laugh. But that day, I really, really cried a lot. Uh, we used to buy organic oil from one of our colleagues. So you know, nala na, tenga na, padla na, you know. So there was crates and crates which were coming in, and uh, my boss, uh, he asked me, "Ada pa yethe tova abdi mar." So you could have asked the students, you could have asked the uh, non-teaching staff, anybody could have done that. He asked me. I joined the institution. It was my second or third month. Poita, I took all the crates from the vehicle. I uh, put up in the staff room. He said, "Ona ka nalla na na pirke teriyo ma abdi mar." I said, "Okay, let's learn." He, I'm late so long. Learning can never stop abdi mar. So you know, it was with mild tears rolling down. I had to segregate. Uh, you know, groundnut oil, sesame oil, and whatever. I kept it. All the staff in the room made one passing comment. I was sitting on the ground only. Aro chair kora kudukla. and they said parvala even if they throw you out of your university you will have a good job in the ration shop so that comment you know i it kind of broke me down that one day so i cursed my parents idengala da nam phd padicho padichu we enna pirichittirukko nu but it kind of shook me up it did and you know i uh, it took some time to come out of that space you know people can actually put you down whatever no matter what position you reach where, which heights you reach you may think you know you climbing the ladder but it's again coming back to you know are you in it you know if you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and say yes i'm going to do my job and if they see you smiling and if you can actually look up to that person's face and say good morning sir you know yeah there you are so you have Mom, to show up sure yeah, mom this instance make you stronger 
Okay. Ma'am, so uh, we think uh, now for whatever happens, let's not blame anybody. We have to only come back stronger. Like she said, restart. So not just restart in terms of your preparation, but in terms of your strength, mental strength, emotional strength, that no matter what, I will do what I'm up to. They and also say, right, women have to be doubly talented <laughs> in what they do to be actually taken seriously. <laughs> yes. That is true. Uh, I, in fact, I think there are a lot of people who also respect when a woman is taking up the role in office and also at home. So there are all kinds of people in society. So we also get that extra attention when somebody we're doing good in both the areas. In, in 1970s, there was a report by the United Nations which said that in India, there is uh, the level of gender inequality is high. And the report said that the reason why there is an inequality between men and women is because of family. So, uh, Anbu Madam, what do you think about this, ma'am? Or why was the reason it was said so? Unfortunately, I was not born then. Probably would have tried to rewrite it. But to keep it very simple and brief and not to get uh, too technical, uh, now we have the International Labour Organization, which classifies this as uh, unpaid care work. So they classified for all genders, not only for women. So they've come up with a nice classification which tells you how your economy is pulled back if you're investing more time into unpaid care work. So I think okay. uh, India also is like looking at the dimension and now the labor force participation rate is really going high. That's one thing all state and national governments are working on. So I hope we will make a turnaround. All right. So we see that that report was more from... Uh, a perspective to push governments to get more labor, uh, more women into the labor workforce. All right, ma'am. Priya, ma'am, uh, work, life, family. Is there anything that keeps you very cool? You're always smiling. So, what what keeps you so cool, ma'am? Work is sometimes cool. Other than cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's like you know, I um, post that you know, a post office hours. Yeah, we do have an interaction section with officers, and then yeah, we have a cool time. But then yeah, that, that's something different. But then back home, yeah, uh, music. The, okay. I'm I'm generally into you know the normal music. I walk a bit with my airpods on and read little very little okay. and um, i have two daughters so i like to do some kind of uh, uh, fashion designing for them so oh. that i know other they report i play course or no and the madri i do oh. work a little on it very nice ma'am uh vandana ma'am you when you're in office i can imagine all figures always issues sometimes <laughs> rage so how do you manage ma'am the work and life and i mean how do you manage that stress well, I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't call it stress okay. because I really love what I do. And uh, if you ask me how I manage my free time, I have a lot of hobbies which I'm very passionate about. Uh, one is music, I sing, I train in Carnatic music, and okay. I also play the flute. Uh, okay. So I've been learning flute for the past four years. So I like to keep trying new uh, songs on the flute. Ma'am, if you say past four years means that after service. Ma'am, do you really find time <laughs> to work, office and you're married also? Uh, do you really find time, ma'am, to learn flute, play flute? I make time. So oh, wonderful. I, I ensure that I wake up six in the morning, have my flute classes either online or offline. And uh, I really ensure that I have my uh, flute classes at least twice or thrice a week because it, it is very refreshing, it's very soulful, it's very peaceful. Uh, the sound of flute is uh, very serene and uh, I really enjoy and feel blessed that I picked up this instrument. So I really, it really keeps me going. So you have right. to make us sing at least one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll definitely do. I think we need yeah. to uh, hear you, ma'am. Uh, Anbu Madam, uh, you've been a professor in government uh, college and public administration for so many years. So uh, from that routine, uh, is there any cool side of you, ma'am? <laughs> That's come first. The job comes later. Oh, so okay. I'm a professional drummer. So wow. I've been uh, into drumming uh, for the last uh, 33 years. Wonderful. So I've done my six grades in Trinity uh, School of uh, Music, London. And I'm yet to complete the two grades. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I don't know. So I've, uh, I've been awarded best drummer throughout. So the highlight of my drumming career was we won the IIT Saran competition uh, for oh. a girl band from Etheraj College for Women. Wonderful. Most of them are now into, you know, professionally into music actually. Amrita Murli, you know, uh, Kalpana, she's into super singer and all of them. Ragini is into renaissance, event management. We were all the girl band. 
so so jamming and drumming is my passion i have a big tattoo here uh, you know <laughs> it's a it's a passionate tattoo that i got so to keep it with me okay so that's something that really really you know uh, holds me good so what so, is the tattoo about it's a drumstick tattoo with a music cliff oh so that's the one and i'm a professional cricketer so much mm-hmm. before kana movie came so we were all the real life kana girls so uh, we were one of the earliest cricket teams from etheraj college for women i played up to the uh, you know north division level vanna ma'am you said you sing and you uh, you've been trained in carnatic singing ma'am can you please sing uh, some lines for all of us here sure margadi poove margadi poove unmadi mele uridam vendu margadi poove margadi poove unmadi mele uridam vendu mettai mel kangal moodavum illai unmadi sendal kadavar kollai mettai mel kangal moodavum illai unmadi sendal kadavar kollai margadi poove margadi poove unmadi mele uridam vendu beautiful man Thank you. Thank you. This is very, very, very nice. When I listen to all of your stories, it's like each of you have the story of two, three lives. <laughs> <laughs> like in movies, they say, right? An individual has got so many. So you, somebody is a fire rescue officer, somebody is a fashion designer, somebody is a flute player, Carnatic singer, and wonderful ma'am. And you are talking about drumming, cricket, administration, and social influencer also. So. I think uh, this is such an inspiration on this women's day to all of you out there that in us we have the potential in us we have the belief and if we have that conviction we can live a life with many many dreams I think on that very note it was a great pleasure to have all of you here ma'am and you will always keep inspiring us thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.